Hi guys, it's Kobe here and in today's video, we are going to talk about the poly effects in the Cinema 4D's MoGraph menu and we are going to use it to recreate this particular scene. So let me hit play. You can see FX which is being broken down into pieces and dissipating or disintegrating. And this is very, very easy to create using the poly effects. It's really easy or relatively easy depending on how much, but it's very easy. I can, I can promise you that. So let's get into Cinema 4D and see how the poly effects works. So I'll create a new scene and I'll come to my mo graph and you can see down here we have poly effects. This one looks a bit different from the other mo graph um, object here and that's because this one works differently. This one works like a different one. That's why it has the color blue. So for me to quickly explain, I'll create just a sphere. This one is just to quickly explain. I'll create a sphere and I'll make the poly effects a child of the sphere. Right now, if you select the poly effects and come to it, attributes manager in the transform. Now, if you rotate it, you can see every polygon is rotating on its own, and that's because the poly effects makes every polygon act separate uh, on its own, like it would do as an object. So, now every polygon works as its own, has its own transform values, scale, rotation, position. So, if I should increase the position Z. And I can scale it and all of them have their individual transform abilities. So that's basically at the transform um, tab. That's all that is uh, there is there. Here you add your effectors and fields and stuff, which we'll talk about later. So I'll actually come in to the object tab, and you can see here too, all we have is full polygon, uh, full police slash segment, and full poly slash spline and with that I'm actually going to use a spline so I'll actually come in here and I'll create the text spline I'll then delete the sphere because we don't need, need it anymore and now I'll put the poly effects under the spline to make it a chart and you can see what's happening it's breaking the spline into various um, parts so the T is separate and the E is the outer part is separate and the inner part is so you can see what it's doing with the spline is it's separating them individual every spline which is fully on its own is separated and that's because the mode is set to full um full police slash segment if i turn it to full police slash spline you can see now the, it's different now what it's doing is actually let me change the intermediate mode to subdivision so that so what now it's doing is now instead of breaking the uh, spline connected that as one object every spline as one segment now it's breaking every like edge connected so every two points that's connected it's breaking it down so basically that's what the two object does and you can go ahead and use it as spline because all of these are spline that has been broken down so you can use it to do whatever you want so that's what the mode app basically does so let me also delete the spline so the next we will go to the field which is just like any other um Field, uh, using it on any other effect so I'll actually make it a child of this and now like I'll add in let's see a normal linear field right and it will act like a linear field so if I move it you can see what's going on so basically it, it because it has its own transforms in here you can straight away add a field to it and you can start working on it but you're not going to use that you are going to use a, um, effectors to affect it. So, because it's a more graph object, effectors too can be applied to it. That's why we have the effectors tab. So, let's go ahead and start creating this scene that I showed earlier. Right, so this is just F and X, right, which is being um, disintegrated using the um, poly effects. Let me actually hide this. And I have the original, so it, this is it. And if I hit play, you can see how it's breaking it down. And it's still um, live, so I can actually come into the T and instead the, I mean the F or any of them. I would see the X. I can change it to something like S. And now if I go back and refresh it and hit play, it should actually, let me actually. So I should make sure this the plane touches uh, this particular object. So I'll move the plane somewhere. 
in here I have a little, little bit of touch and now if I hit play you can start quickly start disintegrating so it's very live I can come into this one and change this one to like this as well let's see go back to refresh I hit play and now it's playing all right so it's very light and it, it's slow because it has a lot of um polygons and that's how we can actually get a much more detail so let's actually start let's recreate this particular scene and it's quite easy so i'll come in here and i'll create more actually you come in the text and i'll use my text objects i'll type the f so we are going to create the f first all right and i'll change the font to this particular font which i think will be fine i said it to bold here yeah. i think bold will be fine and i'll um put it in the middle add the basic um, curves probably two will be fine as well in fact 1.5 will be fine at this stage i'm just trying to show how we do this effect so nothing serious the next thing, because we are going to use the police, let me actually change the shading to garage shading. We want much a bit more polygon, so I'll come into um, the caps type and I'll change it to regular grid, right? And I'll ink check quartz dom uh, dominant. I'll actually leave it like that, and I'll reduce the size to let's say three for now. In fact, let me do it for so that it will be a bit faster when you're playing it and come down to uh objects the text objects the object tab and change it to subdivide so that it will be well broken down and i'll set this one to maybe three as well and increase the subdivision so we have enough polygons for the text to be disintegrated All right the next is i'll quickly come in here and i'll create my poly effects and i'll make it a chart of the text right the next is we want to let it appear so we we'll use the plane effector so i'll select the poly effects and to move graph effector and i'll add the plane effector i'll drag it down and now i'll set it i'll actually first of all take off the position and now um, the scale uniform scale and i'll set it to minus um one so disappear right so for now because you are not going to see what's happening let's first of all use the random first so i'm going to come to more graph effector make sure the poly effect is selected for more graph effector and i'll come to random so that we see what's happening and with the random i reduce the position and stuff to say just 10 by 10 which is very fine in fact it's even a lot let's do it like say 8 by 8 by 8 and now what we want to do is we want to let it grow from the bottom here it doesn't want I don't want it to affect it generally I want it to grow from anywhere like a uh, um, fall of touches right so I come to field and I'm going to use the sphere spherical field and I can see it's affecting only that side right I'll make it smaller I make it a bit smaller um, in here then I'll move it closer to it so I want it the animation to start from here if I want it to start from the top I can actually move I can move I can actually move this to the top but for now I want it to start from the bottom so this is where I'll leave my um, sphere and the next thing I'll, in the random I'll add something I'll come the random and in here I'll add freeze if I click on this particular you can see we have freeze in here I'll add freeze and I'll actually drag it down and the freeze I'll change it the mode from non to grow right so if I hit play nothing happens and that's because we have to add the spherical field so I'll in the spherical field the main mode I'll set it to in that max max should be fine and now if I hit play you can see now it's growing so that's all we are going to do and you are going to do the same thing for the plane effector all right so now I set to go I actually want my follow to be smaller all right and I'll move it a bit closer here 
and when we do those kind of changes we have to come to the freeze and say clear so that it refreshes now it goes so in the freeze you can control the strength or the how fast the, the effect grows so i'll reduce it to say 30 for now if i hit play see it's now a bit slower and even when you reduce the radius as well it also reduce the how fast you grow because the radius determine which polygon is next for you to select and stuff like that so for now we'll leave it like that and we are going to do the same thing with the plane effect so i'll select come to the plane bring it and i'll bring my um, freeze and i'll change the change it to growth i'll also make this one the growth to like say 20 and the reason why i'm like you see the play random actually the, the effects the effect strength is 30 but in the plane i've set it to 20 and that is because i want the after the randomness comes then now the, so the plane will be the last thing to come and sweep or just clear everything so that it will disappear right so that one will delay and now with the plane what i'm going to use is i'll use the shaker field um drag it into the plane field right and now i'll make it i'll make it max right and now freeze let me actually check the freeze it's set to grow and if we hit play and see what's happening now it's clearing it so we are halfway there basically so i come into the random now i can add extra randomness like rotation rotation and stuff like that all right and if i hit play and see we are getting very close the next and in fact i can even add a bit of skill as well so that it makes a bit looks a bit random and now the next thing is you are going to use the time effector and the time effector what it basically does it it gives an object movement over time right so we are going to select the poly effects and come to the more graph menu effector and i'll add the time effector and i'll do the same thing so i'll come to the time effector fields and i'll actually choose the freeze set it to grow and this one i'll also set this one as um, the 30 just like the um, random effector as well and now if i come to uh poly, let me select the poly effect and let me arrange come to effectors and i want the plane effector to be the last thing that happens right so the random comes the time comes and the plane will be the last thing that will come in clear it so we arrange it so the random first if time first and if um, plane last so in the time effector as well we need something to trigger and you, we are going to use the same sphere cafe so i'll drag it and drop it here and i'll change it the blending mode to max as well and now let's hit play we don't see what's happening much and that's because the, the time effect I, it's just rotating the object so in the time effect i come to the parameters you can say just rotating it you can add other rotations and now you can add position as well so i'll say i'll increase it say maybe 23 and let's it you can see now it's opening the thing all right 23 is even more so I'll actually make it let's see 15 and now if we hit play again we are basically there the next thing i'm actually going to add is in the plane effector i'll add position so i'll come to the position and i'll move it backwards but you see when i'm controlling the z position it affects the thing based on the normals of the text right so what i'll do is i'll change it to effector and this one i can actually explain later but for now i'll change the transform space to effector so now it's using the effector space and now in fact bring this one back so on the x i'll set it to let's say minus 35 and let's hit play to see what basically happened everything is fine but i don't like how quick the plane effector comes in so in the plane effector i'll come to its fields and now in the field i'll actually reduce the strength to and hit play and we are literally done that's all we have to do so the rest is adding extra details that's basically everything i did in here right 
and maybe the parameters have changed the positioning and stuff the numbers have changed but basically it's the same thing just three different effectors and playing on each other with no stress at all can reduce even the the growth to like eight and now in the random as well you can come in here play with other stuff you can add, add layers upon layers on top and now if you are cool with it so now i can come into the text and if i want i can say okay then i want to change it to um cx and i can just select this field move it to where we touch and mind all these things were done without any keyframe so you see and you follow the shape of the s and if this is really easy to do so i can even exaggerate make my plane effect at the position move so the only difference with this and the first one i did is just that the one the numbers might be different because this one i'm doing it i didn't i'm not using a particular number to do this but i can see we are having the same effect so all i can come in there now i can come into the text and add more details so i'll come to the caps and I'll say um, increase this one to like two. And now if I hit play, I can see we have a lot more happening in there. So basically, that's how I did it. I mean, you can add extra layers of stuff, animation, um, effects, and this thing to it to get it to look at more dynamic. So all you can, then right now, after I'm done with this, I'll select all and I'll click Alt G to group it. And now I'm cool, so I can just duplicate it. Hold Control to drag to duplicate it, and I have another layer, so I can change this one to however I want. So like, I'll see, I'll call this one X, right? And don't worry when you play it back or refresh. Or if you are having any issue, all you have to do is to come into the effectors, the field, and make sure. Um, the freeze is set is cleared so I select the time is cleared I'll select the random as well and I'll hit clear and in the plane effect that too I'll hit clear you can see now it has refreshed everything so all I have to do is now select this vehicle and where I want it to start so I want it to start from the top here right so I'll come in here and now hit play and now everything happens so that's basically all that I did to actually achieve this disintegration effect and it was really easy you can take time to add more effects and stuff on top of it but this was just to show you how the poly effects work and in subsequent videos i'll do extensive stuff that we can do more interesting and nice stuff and also this can be applied to other objects so it's not only text so for instance i'm now like i can actually take this one back and i'll say i'll create in i'll come to my object and i'll say look for a head or anything that so I actually can actually drag in this particular um, head object and now make this one huge I'll make it bigger All right I'll leave some of it. I'll make it bigger like and now add a bit more details to it I can actually add it like it but I want to add a bit more details so I can select one of the polygons and so you control it and subdivide um, the polygon where actually we subdivide, so I'll subdivide it, add, add more details. So we have a lot of polygons going on in here. And all I'll do is I'll simply drag in um, the poly effects of this text. So I'll select this one to see this is the poly effects. Yeah, where is it? So I'll select the poly effects of this text. So that's the one closer. And I'll drag it to this generic head. And you can see right now, is the head that's been affected so i can disable this i don't want to see this in fact i can also hide this and now this it's the head which is being disintegrated so we can add it to almost everything and because it's a deformer it, it, it acts very nice so basically that's all thank you for watching and i'll see you in the next one and please don't forget to subscribe. Thank you for watching.